Hi everyone, this is the daily video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Monday, June 29th, 2020. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. I'm out for a week this week. I'm going to rest after the big General Assembly push and, uh, and work on my final uh, Doctorate of Ministry papers for the semester. And so while I'm out, um, and Sunday morning as I'm recording this, we're about to start the General Assembly worship service in about 20 minutes. And I'm going to take up as many of the, the questions that folks posed two weeks ago uh, as part of the prompting from one of these updates and see if I can answer some of them. One of those questions was how the Doctorate of Ministry work is going, uh, so I'll answer that next week um, after I've sent in my last papers. But for today, uh, for Monday, I wanted to start with this question. Um, it goes, so I've often wondered how we balance our belief in the inherent worth and dignity of every person with the knowledge that some of those people hold values which are antithetical to ours. In other words, if we must affirm the inherent worth and dignity of, fill in the name of a reviled public figure, how do we do that authentic authentically? That's tough. Um, some of my colleagues refer to this, uh, somewhat in jest as, as the first principle problem. I think I would begin by saying that all of our principles are aspirational, right? They, they point us towards something that we should try to achieve, but may not always in this life. And all our principles need to be tested against the lived experience that we have, the, the lived experience of those that we love. So there's two ways to, to answer this challenge. The, the first is to say that people have inherent worth and dignity, but actions do not. Actions are not inherently of worth. So I generally try not to call certain public figures evil, but the actions that they take, the policies that they support, that's a different question. My faith does not ask me to either require does not require me to either support or respect all those actions. And it's really hard, right, when worth and dignity is not reciprocal. Because sometimes, in order to recognize and support the worth and dignity of my neighbor, I have to pretty sharply critique someone in power in ways that don't always hold up that distinction between person and action. I think our responsibility as a church and, and as faithful people is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And so the priority is on it affirming the worth and dignity of folks targeted by some of these evil policies. You can also think about this in a slightly different way. It can become an issue of safety. Should we preach to someone fleeing abuse that their abuser has inherent worth and dignity? No, that is not the right message for the moment. And in order to do right by the person that we're supporting, we don't need to find reasons to condone evil. We need to condemn what was wrong and support the person in front of us. The Universalists uh, would, would put it this way. God loves everyone. I am not God, and I have no need to be. So that's where I come down. In day-to-day -day life, yes, worth and dignity of all people. When we get into commenting, sometimes with public figures, God loves them. I may not in this life. See you tomorrow.